Previously on Sailing Adrift, we completely refit our 1972 vintage sailboat in our driveway, and then we splashed it into the Columbia River. Last week we got a little more settled and more departure projects underway, like the deck railing and securing our forestay. This week we decided to convert our hank on sail to a furling sail and add a sacrificial sun cover. We even got a fancy new sewing machine from Sail Rights. Here's how that all got started. One thing I've been meaning to do for quite a while is get these sails that we inherited with the boat out and measure them, see exactly you know what percentage my jib is. Uh, we might need to convert it so it'll go on the roller further, and we gotta make sure that we've got a piece of umbrella on the back side so that it doesn't uh, have problems with um, UV damage. I remember there is a little parking lot next to a marina over here that has a giant grass field. So we're gonna go pull these out, do some measuring, and just kind of take some pictures and uh, some assessing real quick. Chris carefully measured and inspected all the sails so we'd know exactly what we're working with. And then he put them back in their sleeping bags. There. I think that's everything we need. Should be all set. It's Sunday morning. Good morning. Look at all this stuff. I am posted up at one of our demo houses. The company that I work for has graciously let me stay here. Um, well, not stay here, but store some supplies here and get some projects done, which is awesome. Today uh, is Sunday and it's the last week we have before we are set to launch. Okay, so what are the projects that I have to do? I have to first convert our hank on sail to a roller furling sail. Um, so that the conversion kit for that I will knock out today. <laughs> that was some serious wishful thinking. And then also that needs a sacrificial sun cover. So I'll put that on that sail. And then two stack packs for the sails, uh, lee cloth, and some other small sort of housekeeping items that if I don't get to, it won't be the end of the world, but it would be super convenient to get to them and get them done now. This house is set to be demolished in about a month. I have a lot of space to work in, which is nice. And I have a whole backyard and a garage and power. I don't know how I could do any of this stuff on the boat. So thank you, Renaissance, the company I work for, for giving me this opportunity because I don't know how I'd get it done otherwise. I don't know, there's there's definitely a laundry list of things that, uh, that we need to knock out before we make this happen. So I'm gonna get to it and uh, you're gonna watch. So a while ago we unpacked the Sailrite sewing machine. This thing is a beast. Um, way, way more substantial than the sewing machine I was working with to do the upholstery. And I've been watching some tutorials and making some notes, doing some maths. I really can't say enough good things about Sailrite. Um, they have some really, really good, easy to follow tutorials on YouTube and online through their website. And their customer service is actually really, really helpful and responsive. Unfortunately, they are not open on the weekends, so getting answers in a timely manner on a Sunday is not ideal and I probably should have prepared myself for that. Um, so I am gonna go for it and lay the sail out in the backyard where I have some more space. Uh, just tidy up some measurements, make sure everything aligns perfectly. And then I'm gonna start cutting. And that's a little nerve wracking because we have one shot at this and I am literally cutting off a major part of the sail and how the mechanism works and then converting it. So wish me luck. First step will be cutting off the side with the hanks, 
Um, I did confirm that this is the jib sale. I have done so by looking at this bag. See, it's clearly marked jib, and there's no way that somebody would have put the wrong sale in the wrong bag at some point. Okay, I started. Now going back now. Just gotta do all, what is it, like 38 some feet of this with these shitty scissors covered in epoxy. What I love about Sale Ride is everything is clearly labeled because there's a lot of parts and a lot of fabrics and a lot of things that I have no experience with. And I'm gonna take this out now. This is the webbing for the loops at the head and the foot. On the tutorial, it said 24 inches. 24. I'm gonna cut these with the shitty scissors now. And then I'm gonna go through and make the ends a little bit better with a hot knife when I get that plugged in. Looks promising. Yep, that'll just fit over the top like so. It's actually pretty perfect because it's supposed to line up with the end here and it's butted up next to the cut. So I think we're in good shape. Next, we're gonna put the Dacron support tape at either end and the industry standard is three inches on the top. I'm going to use like just the remaining stuff that they gave me at the end because we have just enough to make this work. I think if I do my cuts right, we should be perfect. And now I'm gonna use this awesome basting tape. I love basting tape. It was a total lifesaver when I did the upholstery cushions and all that good stuff. This stuff just uh, makes everything stick in place so you don't have to worry about pricking yourself with pins or stuff sliding around. It is seriously a game changer. Pro tip, you don't actually want to cut the basting tape with scissors, you want to pull it apart with your hands. That way it makes an uneven edge and it's easier to peel the backing off of the tape. So I'm gonna apply that here and go put this tape on the top and bottom. Okay, time to start sewing, which means I need to pack this up and get it upstairs. Look at that, quality craftsmanship. Okay, that's done. Now we're gonna go back outside. Next step will be stapling on the tape along the left side. The staples are only temporary and we just need them to secure everything so we can bring it back up to the machine and stitch it in without it wobbling all over the place. Okay, the staples are in. That was surprisingly difficult. I don't know why this took me so long, but it did. So there's the staples. Now ready to do the first stitch, remove the staples, and then the second stitch. Going to get the straps on. Check it out, we have a fully converted sail. This is it, and the next step is to put the sacrificial sun cover on. Which is really just sewing on a bunch of patches. So that should be pretty simple. According to my math, we need three panels 22 inches wide and seven panels 28.5 inches wide. And that'll come out to 7.375 yards and we have eight yards to work with. And these are the panels for the foot. Now I'm gonna cut them out with a hot knife. Best part about this is I don't have to worry about the floor because it's being removed anyway. At this point, I had to call it a day and head home. But before that, I pre-cut all my panels so I could hit the ground running tomorrow. Back at the boat, Chris had some serious projects of his own, primarily that deck rail he started last week. Welcome out. Thanks, looks real good. I got it installed, now I gotta make it pretty. Sand it, route it, all that fun stuff. 
All right, got all the pieces cut. Looks like I'm gonna have enough material to cover the foot here. Now just going to wrap this material around and adhesive it into place. Yes, adhesive it into place with this Super 77 by 3M that we paid way too much for. This part was also pretty tricky because it was so sticky and noxious. Again, really thankful to have this space and be able to work here. This would have been impossible otherwise. Having a clean, broad, flat surface was essential to this sail turning out. We can't afford to have any bunching or debris in our stitches. I successfully applied all the panels to the leech and the foot of the sail. Everything was working out so perfect. Getting ready to do this and I uh, have a bit of a conundrum. See how wide this is? And see how wide that is? There's definitely gonna be some bunching. At this point, I had altered the condition of our sail so much that there was really no going back now. So I just tried muscling through it. I started rolling it up by hand as I fed it through the machine. However, I quickly realized that this might be a lost cause because the tutorial was done with a long arm machine. I managed to get the shorter and skinnier foot side, but then I started the longer and wider leech side and it was a lot more difficult to feed. This would definitely have been easier using the long arm machine, but that's not what we got. About halfway down the sail, I panicked and called sail right. So I had a rather lengthy discussion with the guy from Sailrite, Jeff, who is quite a talker and a super nice guy. He was very helpful and somewhat optimistic for me, which was good to have a cheerleader. We talked for about an hour on the trials and tribulations of this particular kit, the Sacrificial Sun Cover, and how you can do it with the machine that we purchased, but it is next to impossible and requires basically a team. So. I'm by myself today. Um, my strategy is to use a series of clamps in lieu of hands to help me fold the cover and be able to get it through the machine. So I bought four clamps. I only paid for three, but that's not my fault. I got a good feeling about this. This is gonna work. This has to work. Clamps in place. I'm gonna start threading it through my blue hero. This sweet victory brings us to the end of day two. I severely underestimated the scope of this project. It's 4.30 in the morning, still going strong. We're on day three of this cover and I am determined to get it done. Last step is going to be the diagonal stitching, just to reinforce each panel so that there's no sagging or twisting of the fabric or bunching. And then we put it on and hope it fits. Because if it doesn't fit, we are like completely screwed. Status update, the sale is complete. Check it out. Gonna fold it up now and take it out to the boat. We have a lot riding on this sale to be done correctly. Our deadline is approaching fast and we no longer have a buffer for redos and whoopsies. Tune in next week as Chris climbs the mast to get us prepped for our sail configuration. And we put the newly converted head sail to the test. Hey you, thanks for watching. If you like what you see and you want to keep following along, become a subscriber. Just hit that subscribe button below. And special thanks to our patron crew. We really appreciate your support. Okay, I'm, I'm really gonna do this this time. Really, <laughs> really gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. And uh, otherwise you're... Should have grabbed better scissors. My bad. Stay tuned for when Kelly sees somebody about carpal tunnel.